doing weekly videos going forward on our YouTube channel. So we encourage you to subscribe and look out for those videos. We're going to be covering a wide range of topics, questions. We want to engage with you and hear what you would like to know. So please reach out to us, follow the channel, follow us and let us know how we can help you and what questions you have with regards to your fertility. And we are going to give you that content every week. So to start us off this week, we are looking at the important topic of egg aging and why this is so important for women to know about their eggs and ovaries and how this impacts their own fertility and their chances. So this week, we're going to be speaking with Dr. Lauren Scope. Hi, Callista. Great to be with you. Thanks so much. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this topic. And uh, we're going to start you right off with a big question. Uh, why do my eggs age? Callista, that's a very important question. And it's something that uh, young girls are not taught in during biology classes. Even uh, medical students uh, during their gynecological classes, often the topic is, is, is not really ever addressed. But the most important thing is that women are given their total basket of eggs when they are in their mother's uterus at 20 weeks. So when you're a five month old fetus as a female, you get all your eggs. And the age of those eggs has been determined at the time of fertilization. So when the sperm and egg make you, your egg age is determined. And we know that there are no stem cells in your ovaries and the eggs in your ovaries every month as you're developing while you were in your mom's womb from six months or five months in the uterus, you had uh, six million eggs and now you get to birth and your basket is down to 1 million. And then when you get to puberty, which is the average age 12, you're down to about 300, 350,000 eggs. So there is, number one, no new eggs are made because there are no stem cells in your ovaries. And number two, those eggs are programmed to die off. And not only do they die off, but the eggs that you're releasing are actually getting old with you. So again, no new eggs. And that's why ultimately women go into the menopause. And uh, the very, very, very important issue is that your eggs are probably at their peak somewhere between 16 and 26. And after that, your egg function and quality starts to go down and it starts to become more and more difficult for our females to conceive as they get older. I think what's important that you mentioned there is this is not education that is taught to us in like a sex ed class or something. And I think most most younger ladies that I speak with, they firstly do think that we generate the eggs every month, you know. So like you're saying, there's no stem cells, so it's, that's not true. We're utilizing eggs from the beginning. Um, and they also believe that they're only losing eggs when they are menstruating. So the egg number only starts declining then. So I think that's another important fact that you've given out today um, that young ladies need to know. I think what you highlight is, is this thought process that each menstrual cycle, uh, a woman only loses one egg. And in fact, every from the beginning of menses in that cycle, there's somewhere between 100 and 1,000, if not more, um, that enter a race, but all those eggs die off very soon in that cycle and only one egg runs ahead and wins the race because the uterus is only made for one baby. So this cycle happens every single month and that's why we start with 6 million at 20 weeks down to 1 million at birth and so forth. Mm. So I think another importance is now apart from just the egg number and how many eggs we're having, since we had them from when we were literally babies and conceived, um, the issue of how old those eggs are and uh, what kind of impact does the older egg have in reproduction? What, 
what are the complications or what are the risks or, or what is it that's affecting them for older women to conceive? Very interesting question. So if we look at an egg, we have a cytoplasm, which is the cell around the egg. And then in the middle, we have the nucleus, which contains the DNA. And we uh, always only refer to the egg in our minds as DNA. It's our own DNA. It does mean that it's my genetic lineage. But at the end of the day, the DNA gets older. And when DNA gets older, it doesn't divide the way it normally does. And that's why as females get older, we see an increased incidence of genetic abnormalities like Down syndrome and uh, quite a few of the other abnormalities. We see a higher miscarriage rate in our older female population because often nature now will dispense of the genetically abnormal embryos that are implanting. So nature is quite a safety valve or safety feature built in for us. But we also get aging in the cytoplasm and in the cytoplasm the little structures that are important to maintain implantation, ongoing development and I call those little structures the ESCOM of the eggs. So as we get older as females the lights start to go out. So our eggs oh that then have been fertilized um, don't have the same potential despite the fact that the DNA is normal to actually implant. So there's got to be other f uh, factors that nature doesn't want to have in the offspring of older eggs. Mm. And I think a key there is when we're referring to reproductively older women, um, we are talking outside of that, that bracket that you gave of when is our peak according to biology which is the, the 16 to 26 or 27 that you mentioned. So we're not referring to reproductively older women and older women are two very different terms. Correct. And I think um, what you've also made me think of now is, is, a, is a vital point that we need to highlight with our audience. And that is, number one, we know that 90% of the population continue in the background they conceive, they don't have difficulty, and we know that there are older women in that group of patients that are conceiving naturally. There's some women who are 45 and they're having their seventh child, but they have been reproducing from a young age and have therefore maintained their potential. We are referring to the 10% of patients that have difficulty falling pregnant and have to then seek help. Now, when patients need help to conceive and fertility specialists need to get involved, that's where the importance of egg age comes into it. Because that group we know very well. And we know that when females come to us at a much older age group, after 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, the most important issue there is the age of the eggs. It's become less important from a sperm point of view because today we can pick up a single sperm with a glass needle 14 times thinner than a human hair and put it into an egg and achieve fertilization that way. But in the 10% of patients that need help, the single most important factor for us is the age of the eggs. And the younger the age of the eggs, the better the outcome is when we need to treat our couples who are having difficulty. Absolutely. So I think what, we, what we're getting to is, is even speaking about then, we're talking about that first conception, right? So primary infertility, where they haven't got the history of having multiple kids yet at a younger age. So when those women are above 35 and trying to achieve that first pregnancy, that's where we're experiencing these, these difficulties. So would egg freezing have been a viable option for those women if they had frozen at a younger, at a younger age? So yes, uh, egg freezing would be. And uh, what I just want to highlight what you pointed out was um, there seems to be something that the earlier a woman conceives, the better her chances are to subsequently conceive. So pregnancy in its own right is a kind of an, what we call an epigenetic influence. In other words, influencing the genetics from outside. 
So the single most important factor is to conceive when you're much younger because your eggs have much better potential. So today with a good egg bank and a good freezing technology for eggs, if you're 22 now and you put those eggs in the freezer and you only find Mr. Right when you're 40, those eggs that you put in the freezer at 20 become your own source of your own eggs and the potential of those eggs are equal to what they were like when you were 20 years old. So you become your own, your own egg donor because it's not really the age of the womb that becomes a problem, it's the age of the eggs. So if you put your eggs away in the freezer now at 20, when you get to 40, if you're not falling pregnant on your own, you can then go back and rely on those eggs and you then become your own young, healthy egg donor. You're using your own eggs to go back into your 40-year-old uterus and giving you the same success rate that you would have had when you were 20 years old. Amazing. Um, I think another important point that um, maybe you can shed a little light on is I see on all the various online platforms all the time women asking other people, other doctors for, you know, the sort of a magic pill that can help them. You know, this medicine that they can swallow that's going to fix their eggs and fix their uh, fertility. So just chat to us a little bit. Why? Why isn't there a magic pill? You know, and... and, and what should we know so that we're not falling and, and you know, spending thousands of rands on a hundred supplements that are not going to do anything yeah. to our egg aging? So this goes back again to the fact that, unfortunately, when you fall into that 10% uh, group of patients that are having difficulty falling pregnant, you as a patient having lost control over a basic element of your life and that is just to be able to conceive like your sister, like your neighbor, etc. And now you start hunting and looking for solutions. And unfortunately, there are a lot of people that have climbed on the bandwagon offering you all these magic bullets and magic pills. And uh, we have no way of putting new young stem cell eggs into your ovaries. We have no magic treatment to regenerate the genetic function within the aging egg. We know that there is some evidence to support the fact that DHEA, which is a precursor of estrogen, does drop off in the ovary as part of ovarian aging. So if your actual male hormones are low, by checking that on a blood test, you would then benefit from DHEA. It may add energy to the older egg, but not necessarily change the DNA. And the other uh, substance uh, that could be of benefit is coenzyme Q10. Because coenzyme Q10 has a positive effect on the ESCOM of the eggs. So it does help the mitochondria and the energy storehouses within the egg. So that today would probably be the only two supplements that would be of value. The other supplement that anyone trying to fall pregnant on should be on vitamin, uh, on folic acid, sorry. And uh, the final one is we should be checking our vitamin D levels because um, today a lot of us are walking around vitamin D deficient and, and very vitamin D deficient because we sit in offices, although not now anymore, we're at home, but despite that uh, we don't get much ultraviolet light and uh, so get your vitamin D up. If your male hormone levels and, and females have male hormones and males have female hormones, so we can check female ho uh, male hormone levels. And if they are reduced, it would be of value to add in DHEA and the other one would then be coenzyme Q10. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. Thank you so much. I think that's really going to help a lot of ladies. Uh, I see it being questioned all the time on the, on the various blogs of what they could just take to help. Um, I think the other thing that's quite important and misconception is if I do the insurance policy of freezing my eggs, um, the question of, well, how many eggs? And does one egg mean one baby? And, and what should I be aiming at if I am going to freeze my eggs? A very, very good question. And uh, when we talk about putting eggs in the freezer, 
we need to know, and even under IVF conditions, um, 20 eggs does not equal 20 babies because we start out and what we, in order to get eggs from a patient and just not one egg, we can stimulate the ovary and those 100 to 1,000 eggs that were entering the race, we would be able to rescue quite a few of those eggs. And we're able to look at ovaries today and we're able to do what we call antral follicle counts and look at the small little egg sacs that are in the ovary, which are very obvious on ultrasound. And that number that we see per ovary, if we then stimulate over 10 or 11 days with the correct drug regime, we are going to get 15 or 20 eggs if that's what we counted at the time of a period. Now, let's work on a round figure and let's say we've got 20 eggs. Firstly, not all the eggs are going to be ripe. So the ripeness is usually somewhere in the region of about 80% if you have been stimulated and monitored correctly. We now need to clean those eggs because we can't freeze them with all the cells around them that we call the cumulus or the cloud. And when we wash away that cloud, we're able to see which eggs are now mature. You cannot necessarily eyeball the egg and say, that's a good quality, that's a bad quality egg, that egg will give us a baby, that egg won't give us a baby. But what we know is once the 80%, so let's say we've now got 16 eggs, have been put in the freezer, when we warm the eggs, probably the survival rate of frozen eggs in our unit is at least between 98 and sometimes up to 100%. Sometimes you'll do a little worse than that and end up with 80% that have survived. So let's say 16 eggs were put in the freezer and we got 16 eggs out that actually survived the freezing process. When we now inseminate the eggs with sperm, our fertilization rates usually in a very good unit are no more than about 60%. And in order to fertilize frozen eggs, we have to use ICSI. ICSI is where we pick up the sperm with the glass needle and we gently put it into the egg under a microscope and fertilization rates of 60%. So we're now down to eight of those eggs have fertilized. And of those eight eggs that have fought and fertilized, probably only four will end up as day five embryos. So we've gone from 20 eggs down to four embryos. Now, if you're 22, if you're a 22 year old and those are 22 year old eggs, only one in two of those day five embryos will be genetically normal. So those 20 eggs should give us the potential of two babies. And a rule of thumb, a rule of thumb today is the age of the patient at the time she froze her eggs is roughly the number of eggs that we would need to have in the freezer to hopefully establish two ongoing pregnancies. So if you're 40, we need 40 eggs. And the one problem with a 40 year old, one problem with a 40 year old is if we scan her ovaries, we're going to see many, a lot less antral follicles, which means that we may not see more than four antral follicles per ovary at 40, which means we're not going to get more than eight eggs. And again, of those eight eggs, if we're lucky, we'll get down to maybe two embryos. And in a 40-year-old, probably one in five, one in six embryos will be genetically normal. So we start off with a very wide funnel, and that funnel comes all the way down to a narrow exit. And this is what we have to know, and this is a very important fact. Again, as you said, 20 eggs does not equal 20 babies. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, well, I think that from a, a particularly just talking egg and egg aging perspective, that's all the questions I can think of that I come across and that patients ask us online all the time. Is there any other piece of information that, that you would like to convey to our watchers? Yeah, I'm just very excited that uh, this is a, a, a Callista initiative and uh, we are going to be doing more of this and we are going to be uh, going uh, we are going to be um, putting at least one video a week onto YouTube. So we ask you to please subscribe um, so that you will know when these videos are coming out. 
We are also going to start doing live streaming with Q&As.